Salutations, everyone. It is time once again for our hero, Pharos the Vagabond, to begin making his trek across Drang Lake. Oh, wrong way. Um, as you can see, I finally have my... If the camera would let me show you, my Lion Great Axe. This bad boy was the absolute dickens to drops. I actually managed to farm out the entire set of Lion Warriors in the Shaded Wood on this character off screen, and not a single one dropped. Oh, <laughs> it would seem I've left my farming gear on. Let's, let's take that off for some fashion souls. But, I did actually manage to farm it on another character, and a kindly phantom helped me trade it between the two, so... No harm, no foul, and I managed to get my wonderful great axe here. As you can see, I've already upgraded it to plus 7, and it has BC scaling in strength and dex, so it's quite the good quality weapon. It hits for just about the same as the uh, Bastard Sword right around now, but it is a level below, and it has uh, a little bit more scaling once it's actually fully upgraded, whereas the Bastard Sword scaling hardly improves at all. Since we haven't been through the Harvest Valley yet, Gavlan has yet to move here, but this item right here is what really tipped me off to Pharos being the Rotten as a whole. Just that entire concept. These statues here are Pharos's signature. These statues are the sign of Pharos being in an area. They only appear we're in areas that Pharos, either as the Rotten or as the friend of the, uh, what we call it, the Rat Covenant, has entered. It is true that these can be found in Sholva, but as Pharos was a traveler, a wanderer, a vagabond, he likely went there and either discovered how these were made there and brought them back, or invented them there and was the one who placed them around the the area. It, it is a little bit wonky with that, but that life gem right there is the real hint that tipped me off to the whole idea. From Software is very smart with how they handle their drops in that there there's very rarely a drop that's worthless and if there is a worthless drop, aka one life gem, a singular prism stone, anything ridiculous, there's a reason for it. Either it's because they're trying to... Grim Great Axe, that's, that's also pretty great, but it's pure strength. Either they're trying to draw your eye, keep your camera away from something else, or uh, force you into in a tricky position just in order to get that loot. That or they could be teasing you, but this life gem right here, it draws your eye, it's you look around the room, you're probably ignoring everything, but you see that bit of loot and immediately you're looking there. Your camera's focused and what else is there? All of these statues of Pharos. All of these little hooded statues that are so indicative of Pharos's presence. Uh, you can actually take the time to compare like the profile of the statues here to the uh, figure on the right hand side of my covenant emblem and you can see that it's very similar it's that same cylindrical shape the rounded top and it even has the sort of face hood sort of outline on the front of it with the shoulders and, or arms or whatever of the robe represented as well it's because FromSoft was so uh, intent upon drawing your eye to those statues that really got me looking at why those statues are there and where else they show up in the game. I did actually come through and kill this crystal lizard beforehand in order to upgrade my Lion Great Axe to plus 7 since I was short by one large Titanite, but it's no big deal. It's always has, it always has the same drops. A set of large titanite and a bit of twinkling titanite, which can be very useful for getting your weapon all the way to plus six. But 
by this point I've got the two main weapons that I'm going to be using throughout the playthrough. I did actually have a look to see if there were any other really good quality great weapons, and it would seem that there are, but almost all of them are pretty late game items. Things like the Wrathful Axe or Yorg's Spear. A lot of them come from the DLC as well, but uh, there's just a lot of really, really late game kind of special Titanite weapons that will be totally useful for Pharos, but at the same time they're going to be a bit of a pain to have to wait till. These guys fall quite nicely. Something else that's fun is just how sweeping the axe is. The axe and the bastard sword kind of serve similar functions, but the bastard sword actually has a much quicker and lighter moveset, while the great axe is basically going to stagger anything in its path. And, as you can see, it actually swings a bit wider as well. So, it's, it depends on what your situation is, what you want to use. Breaking these is pretty easy. I try and do it with my shield just to save durability on my weapon, as well as the fact that the shield actually, the parry, breaks it in three hits. So, it, it can be quicker than actually trying to hit it with your weapon if you're using a uh, lighter weapon, such as a dagger or even possibly a catalyst. Oh. Oh, goodness. That's one of the pros and cons of the great weapons, is that they actually swing directly where you point with your left analog stick, even if you're locked on. So, while sometimes they can be used to hit an enemy while being locked on, even when you're predicting a roll or some sort of evasion, at the same time they can also whiff when you should normally just be hitting them square on the chin with a certain strike just because they're right in front of you like that. It's especially bad if you try swinging right after either rolling away or trying to evade because if you haven't quite readjusted your left stick you're actually gonna whiff completely like I just did and swing in the complete wrong direction. Did I tag the bonfire? I don't think I did. There we go. I want to make sure that I have that because this next encounter, while not too terribly dangerous, uh, there there are four enemies in a row that can swarm you, so you want to play it safe no matter what. That first trap is going to suicide himself, and you can just run on by. And these guys, what you want to do is lure them into an attack animation and hang around for a second. Ah, you can see what I mean. Let's just get real quick move there. And if you can lure some of them into attacking, they'll block the ones behind them, and it'll form a really nice pile-up where everyone just dies a horrible death. Which is kind of what I'm looking for at this point. Just as long as everyone dies a horrible death, I'm happy. I was just checking to see how many uh, slabs I have. When they come at you with their charging raised weapon attack, they can actually be rather difficult to hit before they damage you just because it's one of those attacks that leads with its hitbox. If you're close enough to hit them back with any uh, short of medium to short range weapons, uh, they, they will already have dealt you at least a small blow. So, something to look out for. Here we are with these three. I see him coming in with his raised attack so I want to back off slightly. You can see how the hitbox on that is just absolutely massive. I want to do something just a little bit quicker, just so I can make it absolutely certain I take them out without any risk. Two Titanite chunks. Nice. That's actually enough to get my Bastard Sword all the way to max. And since there's another two Titanite chunks right at the beginning of the next area, I could also get my Great Axe to plus 8. Then again, come to think of it, I could just get my Great Axe to plus 10, depending upon if that's what I want to use. Opening this chest triggers this little alarm that summons all the spiders from the walls, but I want to kill them anyways, so it's no big deal. It's basically just forcing me into combat that I was already going to be participating in anyways. As you can see, they're a little bit annoying because their attacks are so fast, but it's not a terribly big issue. 
and they all have a nice chance to drop some really fun and uh, varied weapons, so it's something you want to make sure you're taking the time to clear. I'm going to life gem because I've got so many already. The moment I head into either the DLCs, I'll have actually far too many, and it's always best to conserve as much Estus as possible before a boss encounter. <coughs> Goodness. Here we go. This boss is arguably one of the easiest in the games, and I, I, I can't really figure out what FromSoft was playing at with this encounter. I figured out what the problem... Excuse me. What the problem was that I was having with the two different uh, casters having different health amounts. I believe one of them actually casts Sacred Oath after a moment, so... Oh. This isn't going to be too good against hitting those ones on the ground, but it'll do quite nicely against this bad boy. There we go. And so, while the first one died in very quick succession, the second one actually had boosted defenses, and so it took a little bit longer to do away with. That's the second Titanite slab, so once I have the requisite Titanite, I can, well, three more chunks, to be honest, considering I'm about to pick up two more. That'll allow me to get both of these weapons to plus ten, and save up most of the rest of it for armor upgrades, if I'm going to be dipping into that or if there's anything late game that I'm going to want to dip into. But once again, most of that's going to be special Titanite items, so I don't really know how that's going to work out. I'm going to have my Homeward Bones equipped because there's several quick drop sort of runs that can be done from this starting area that allows you to pick up a few things, but at the same time you really want to just get out immediately afterwards. This is one of those areas that I don't like because it takes multiple runs to clear, but there's nothing to be done about it, and it does have a lot of really good loot, so I'm not going to complain too badly. That's immediately some chunks. One on the Titanate Lizard, one on the drop right there, and it also gives you a twinkling of Petrified, so that's something good to keep your eye on. Up right on over, and going to make a second drop down here in order to get the large titanite and estus flash shard that are going to be right here. Did he drop anything? Nope. Oh. That roll carried me off the edge, so I didn't manage to snag the large titanite shard that's up there, so we're going to try that again. Come to think of it, I might not want to head through here just yet because I don't have the Creighton Pate event unlocked yet. I haven't gone through uh, Earthen Peak, have I? No, it doesn't look like I've even killed the Skeleton Lords. So since I haven't gone through Earthen Peak, I won't have access to I, uh, Pate's second encounter, so they're not actually going to be waiting for me over there. I'm pretty sure I have Creighton all done up, but uh, yeah, Pate's going to be a little bit annoying to grab. Immediately come down after you grab that and there's another petrified dragon bone. There's just so much good stuff here. Bunch of really great drops, but it still makes you come through multiple times, which is just the most annoying thing for me. I like areas that are very linear, very much you can head right on down and maybe not linear per se, as I kind of like them to have branching paths but I want them to be just different ways of taking the, it on. I want to have all of the relevant stuff all in one direction. I'm gonna pick up some of these fire arrows, because not that much, <laughs> because archery seems like it's gonna be a nice addition to the character and um, what you call it, bows seem to really fit with the whole Pharos idea. I am gonna grab the butcher's knife because while it's a pure strength weapon, it's wielded by Faros himself, or the Rotten, or however you want to say it, and so it's something that you basically have to grab if you're going to be cosplaying Faros to any extent. He may not have used it in his extensive travels, but it's certainly connected to his character. Did that not kill him? Really? Huh. I was expecting that to kill him. 
As you can see, I use my shield a lot just to break the scenery. Saves weapon durability, and it usually uses less stamina and locks you up for a shorter amount of time. The Crescent Axe is a great axe technically, but it only uses the regular axe's moveset, and it's a very sweet spot oriented weapon. If you're not hitting with the sweet spot, you're doing extremely reduced damage. And so for those reasons, I don't really like it too terribly much. I want it to be a, a useful weapon. Like, it's one of those weapons that I really like as a concept and would, would love for it to be more viable. But because of how it is set up and how it works in the game, I just don't rate it too highly. It's got a great aesthetic, and I like its two-handed moveset. But at the same time, its stats are so middling, and its sweet spot is so necessary in order for it to get proper damage that I just don't think it's very useful for anything except for maybe a cosplay build of someone dating all the way back to Dark Souls 1, because it is a throwback to Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 1, it was a very dex and faith-oriented weapon, Whereas here in Dark Souls 2, it's become a quality int weapon. The int scaling is very poor, but... Oh, goodness, I'm trying to get the parry, but... I seem to be mucking up the timing. The uh, face scaling has been done away with... Oh, goodness. Let's, let's, let's stop mucking about. I say stop mucking about, and then I immediately turn my back to him. Stop. There we go. The, the thing that I really love about the Great Axe is that phantoms in this game, which have been incredibly buffed as to what they used to be, have ridiculous amounts of poise and stamina, and so Great Axes can still kind of keep them locked down with a very high degree of reliability, whereas a lot of other weapons struggle to maintain the stagger, even if they can stagger on the first hit. There we have it, and I'm going to grab the side loot in this area and open the door, and then I'm just going to homeward bone back out because I need to upgrade my equipment, and there was one other thing. Uh, yes, there's, there's still a few more things to be done before I, uh, oh, ouch, before I finish. God, this moveset's going right over their heads. There we go. Aggro this one up here. Have him drop down. There we have it. And I'm going to grab the item and open the other door as well in order to be able to run through once I'm coming back for the second go round. It even replenishes the homeward bone I'm going to be using. That's nice of him. He immediately is like, Excuse me? I was having a private moment in here, but I'll leave, don't worry. I'm heading right back out. No need to get your knickers in a twist. Head on back to Majula for some upgrading. Come to think of it, I could have done my upgrading down there at, uh, what's her face? Ornifex? But I wasn't thinking of it at the time. And it's not too necessary, especially because I also have some level ups to uh, distribute. I always rush right through his dialogue, but... Oh well. I, you know, I am going to get the Lion Great Axe all the way up. I kind of want to switch it up because I've been using the Bastard Sword so much. I want something a little bit new, a little bit different to the playthrough. So, swipe that on over. Where's my bow at? It's plus four. How many large Titanite do I have? I have enough. I'm also going to get my bow to plus seven because... While it's not a quality bow, it's done me right, and it's probably one of the better bows in the game just because of its low stamina costs and its fire rate. So let's get that equipped in the left hand. In case I want... no. There we go. This means I can't use any fist attacks, but at this point it's not important. Oh! Oh, Benhart's Parma. Huh, I wonder if that would be good fashion souls. I'll have to see. I do want to grab his leggings, because I think they might look good, as well as the rest of his armor. 
and here we are. I want to be grabbing some witching urns, some fire bombs, and when I finally make my way over to oh, throwing knives, should I get those? Um, yeah, let's let's at least get myself to twenty because I do want to be using more consumables. It's really fitting in the play style that I'm going for, and I just think that it would do a little bit better. The holy water urns are fairly useless, so I'm not going to bother with them, but aside from that, I think the consumables work rather well. Oh, do I have poison arrows equipped? No, I want to have poison arrows equipped, just in case I need that little bit of utility. Let me think. I could finish off Brightstone Cove. Did I? Oh, yeah, I didn't. Act I'm going to activate the second bonfire in Brightstone Cove, and then I'll head on over to uh, Huntsman's Cops and fight my way on over to the, uh, whatchamacallit, Harvest Valley and all the way over to, what is it again? The, the old Iron Keep, that's right. Because I want to make sure that I have access to the infusion system. And also, the old Iron Keep is a uh, great place for... Um, no, there's, there's something specific. Magerold, that's right. I want to be able to buy black firebombs from Magerold of Lanifer. And by heading through... Harvest Valley, I'll make it to uh, the Earthen Peak, which, oh dear, forgot, I forgot, I forgot, forgive me. Earthen Peak, oh, I got staggered out of it. I got gypped. Let's see if I can try that again and be paying attention this time. But in Earthen Peak, I can talk to Pate and unlock the Pate Creighton event over here so that I can actually grab that as well when I make my final run all the way down to uh, what's her face uh, the Duke's dear Freya sadly this does kind of necessitate me heading through the area in order to clear it but it's worth it come on through again I always forget that there's the Titanite lizard immediately off to your right here And that's all she wrote. Some large tight. Oh, come on! There's another drop up there. I can't remember if it's a large tight knight or uh, a tight knight chunk, but I remember that it is definitely worthwhile. Goodness, what is my Estus at? It's only 6 and 2. I'm sure that I have more than that. I'll make a point of upgrading that next time I'm in Majula. And remember to actually spend my souls on level ups like I said I was going to. You can see why I really just love this really broad, powerful move set. It's very powerful, very strong, very much going to stagger all these guys. Duck under that real quick. And you, sir, need to stop. Oh. Well, okay. Now you're an on issue. Come right on through and get my Southern Ritual Band. Plus one, I believe. And then I'm going to homeward bone out and head over to the Iron Keep as fast as I can. As you can see, it's taken me quite a while to clear through most of this area. And that's just because of how long it takes to clear the area. How many different runs you have to make in order to grab every bit of loot, which of course I'm going to. Just because uh, that's one of the things I find so compelling about the game all the loot all over the place. It's very, very satisfying. Okay. It seems that I made it to the bridge approach and then did nothing with my time. Huh. A little bit annoying, but no matter. We can still make it quite easily through the area. Yeah, judging by the fact that there are drops over there, I've actually done absolutely nothing here. Luckily, I've stacked up on firebombs, I mean throwing knives, which is going to mean I can easily plink away at all the uh, poison moths that are in the area. 
And aside from that, my weapons are extremely overleveled for this area, so... Okay, looks, looks like we're doing some PvP. No, no, no. Come on. I see you. I've bowed to you, you moved. Come on, we're fighting this. I want to have my witching urns equipped just because they're a nice bit of free damp. Whoa! What was. Was that. What is that? Oh, that's dead again! He's trying to get me with the corpse over there. Ha! <laughs> that's a fun little. That was a fun little encounter. I was not expecting that. Enjoy. That causes him to move away. Oh, don't don't drag me through the NPCs. I haven't cleared the area. You know that's not cool. What a scumbag. Though he is kind of dedicated to the whole dead again thing, so I can forgive him. Yeah, he's going to wait for me to kill things and immediately trigger them as they fade. You know, that's an interesting gimmick. I kind of like that. So long as he keeps it interesting like that, I'm not going to complain too much, but... He is being annoying, and he knows it. <laughs> I, I wonder if he's like a hacker with how many uh, casts of this he has. Aw, oh, rolled through it. I don't want to backstab them, because that's going to lock me up into an animation right next to them. Oh! Okay, now he's now he's done it. Now he's being annoying. Little twat. Use the trees as cover. Roll away as fast as I can. It's a little bit difficult, but I think I can manage it. Is he gonna dead again? He is! And that's what you get for running around. You know what? I, I will bow because you were a you you were an interesting encounter, but you started using the enemies against me and that's not that's not fair. I am gonna take you out if you try any of that. I am surprised that uh there wasn't too much lag there. It didn't seem like there was at least, and I don't think any of the hits that either of us got were lag hits, but I, I honestly would have expected a little bit more lag from that sort of situation. Oh. Yeah. Admittedly... Oh, dear. The Great Axe is not the best for these guys because you really want a quicker weapon in order to deal with them because of how agile they are. I can pretty much ignore the damage of that archer. Have I still not upgraded my Estus? What am I doing with my time? If anything, this is just going to mean that I start burning through my life gems at a reasonable rate, because honestly, I'm, I'm being a hoarder here, 82, before I've even entered Harvest Valley. That's just silly. Is there another archer? Yeah, I was pretty sure there was at least one more. That encounters four of these little undead rogue fellows, and I wanted to make sure that I'd taken all of them on. It is weird, though, that someone is invading in Huntsman's Cops with this much soul memory. Because, honestly, by the time you have... Let me check. 6,700,000 soul memory, you really should be a little bit more advanced than this. 670 soul memory. Sorry about that. Not quite accurate. Did I grab this? I did. That should be everything between me and the next section, so I can head right on through. I'll come to think of it, this means I didn't even activate the Creighton event, because he's still locked up in that lockaway over there. I was just not ready for this storyline at all. What was I thinking? No matter, I can activate all this now that I'm here. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the... Uh, Oh, maybe I will, because I've got an actual bow and arrow. Ignored. Um, I was talking about the Titanite Lizard that's through that little pass up there, because it's incredibly annoying, because uh, it has one of the largest aggro distances of all the Titanite Lizards. 
And so if you can't take it out from range, you have a very, very low chance of actually taking it out. But I have a plus seven short bow with fire arrows, so that may actually give me the damage I need. I know it's got one tight knight chunk. There we go. Because of how fast the short bow is, I managed to get the second hit before it started running away. Oh, flame butterfly. But I want to get out of here. That's one of the best moves to be doing if you're using the Great Axe. Run away, begin your attack, and then turn. Because you, there's a little bit of time in between triggering the attack and the attack coming out where you still have control of where it uh, actually aims. And you can use that to your advantage as you... Oh! I can get kill shots with this. That's, that's lovely. I wonder if it was because I got a headshot or it just has that much damage versus these guys. Don't want to deal with him. Let's check. Nope. It's either because he had reduced defenses for whatever weapon he was wielding or it was a headshot. But that does mean that a headshot will be able to kill them, pretty much guaranteed. And while there's only one of them left, it's still something I want to take advantage of. Come on, right around. You, sir. There you go. Have at you. I believe you could make a jump attack to there, but he has no real worthwhile drops, so it's not something I'm going to go after. Merciless Rana. She is going to be an absolute joke because of the Great Axe. As you can see, it just keeps her locked down in such a really easy manner that she doesn't pose much of a threat at all. A summon sign? Really? Is is this like usually not as... Is this in a later area? I almost always come through here right after I finished Hide and a little bit of the Bastille, so is that is that not usually the case? Just because of all the actual character interaction, like... I'm starting to suspect that it may not be the last place on some people's mind. There we go. Luckily, the Great Axe, as you can see, is trouncing them quite nicely. Sometimes I come through here on a thrusting weapon build, and the skeletons can actually be quite annoying because they have an extremely high resistance to thrust damage, which makes a lot of sense, considering they're skeletons, but it's still annoying to deal with. I'm not going to bother risking that jump just yet, because I want to make sure I have a quick path back and have activated the Undead Lockaway Bonfire. I will be grabbing that on the way to the boss, but at the same time, I don't want to have any sort of risk in between me and the bonfire, so let's head right on through. There we go. As you can see, I'm taking advantage of swinging before you're actually facing them, and that allows your swing to come out very quickly. It's extremely useful in PvP as well, because they, if they're reacting very quickly, they can interpret that as they're going to be safe at a certain angle, and then you can turn it on them last second. I have actually seen some people complain about tracking on great weapons, and it's the funniest thing to hear because great weapons actually have no tracking. It doesn't happen. All of their swings are manually aimed. So if someone's complaining about tracking on a great weapon, it just means they're being outplayed. I believe Tears of Grace was complaining about his lack of tracking on the uh, Chime Great Hammer that he just released his little PvP video in the arena there, and I was just laughing because I knew that every little bit of tracking that he was getting was his own doing, and when he failed to track, it was because he wasn't pointing it in the right direction. It was, it was his own fault. It's definitely a funny little thing to watch happen. There we go. Only an amber herb. I feel gypped. Let's just... Head right on along then. They do have a chance to drop their staff, and their staff is actually one of the best staffs in the game for making a gouge sorcerer. Spicing down 
really high-end spells because it has some pretty good base damages and some nice and some mediocre scaling so it, it is one of the better st uh, staves for running really low int casters just take some time to dawdle around while those skeletons get set up now they're coming up for me and I can just knock them down one at a time they're a lot less annoying than they could be but still not something that you uh, want to risk yourself taking out roll that what I really hate is when they just sit behind their shield because it could be very annoying to have to deal with that not to mention their attacks come out for what that rolling attack should have hit them there we go now I can get a backstab heal up once I come out of this and he's not going to be an issue right now it's just between me and these ads lure him over here mayhap nope he doesn't want to come oh well I can still take each one of these guys down in a single swing there we go that's what I like to see and now this last skeleton lord is just gonna fall before my great axe you can see why I wanted this like look at that at plus 10 it has plus 10 and 40 40 it has 450 base damage which while not the absolute most you can have is very powerful for how much weight is it only 12 weight this is a very very strong weapon and with 45 poise damage it's gonna keep most things staggered the entire time I don't know if the 110 counter damage is out of the norm for great axes no it certainly seems to be the general number for most axes but uh, aside from that it's a very very good weapon how much is its weight in comparison as well it's not quite as good as the bandit great axe but the bandit great axe has far worse scalings the crescent axe is barely even a great axe and oh yeah it's half the weight of the Gurm great axe so I would definitely say it's a very valuable weapon for its sort of niche if if you are running a quality build and want a really heavy hitting weapon that's gonna take advantage of both of your scalings the lion great axe is the weapon for you it's very very powerful very good very useful in a lot of circumstances too it has very sweeping attacks which is one of the reasons I love the bastard sword but the great axe moveset just kicks it up a notch there we go Chloe's just kind of hanging around I've heard it speculated that she might not actually be Lenagrass daughter and that he's just hollowed enough to uh, sort of not even recognize his daughter anymore just the idea of a lonely woman who likes stones reminds him of his daughter so much that he just kind of that uh, there's a little bit of a connection there but I, I couldn't really say I don't believe that interpretation but it is something to think about there's gonna be another tight night chunk over in the corner there and is that gonna be enough it is not I'm gonna need one more chunk before I can get my bastard sword to plus 10 I suppose if I hadn't upgraded the uh, short bow to plus 7 and just left it at plus 6, it could have worked out. But I, I do value the extra damage on the short bow. Come to think of it, I could actually get the short bow all the way to plus 7. I mean, plus 8 with the chunks I have now. But eh, I, I, I do think I want to save up my the chunks I just got for and wait for that one last one that I'll get eventually in order to get my bastard sword to plus 10 as well if I have one plus 10 melee weapon I kinda of feel obliged to use that and since I do want to keep the playthrough varied I am gonna to want to keep both of them at plus 10 as quickly as possible in order to have the option to switch between and not feel guilty about it as you can see, I've already just been using the Great Axe pretty much exclusively. 
Still has all those. Now he will show up in the Doors of Pharos and have an infinite inventory, which I will be taking advantage of a little bit later to stock up on some poison arrows. You know what? I will actually take advantage of that right when I reach the next bonfire. That bonfire that's right through there is going to be where I cut the episode, but before that, I do want to go back to Majula, upgrade my Estus flasks finally, spend some time and head over to the doors of Pharos in order to get more poison arrows for their utility, and just generally take care of all these massive souls that I've been carrying around. Just walk on around. Unlock combat works great versus these hulking behemoth type enemies. There's, they really can't adjust to you fast enough. I am going to use the Bastard Sword here because it's much quicker and it does have a uh, more zippy sweeping attack that's going to be useful for taking out these light unarmored enemies that have no real defenses to speak of. You can get there? That's cool. It's always funny seeing signs in little out of the way places like that windmill over there. It's like, how did he even get there? And... Well, I bet it doesn't have very many ratings. I'm certain it has at least a few. Because messages like that, people see them and immediately become inspired, I one might say, to reach that same location now that they know it can be done. He just summoned signs all over the place. I was really not expecting this. I was expecting to be basically out of range of most of the people who were going to be in this area. But, no matter. Time to grab some poison arrows, and then back to Majula to finish off all of these massive souls that I've got here. Come to think of it, I might take the time to record some PvP before, well, between this and the next episode. I'm in the Rat Covenant, and I actually have a way to set up my internet that should work, but... I don't know until I try, and I would really like to have some more mid-level PvP rather than once I've already reached max and um, and everyone's completed their build. I like the Rat Bro Covenant for the fact that it brings in a lot of people who are still completing their builds, haven't quite hit their full functionality yet. Come on in, and Gavlan, buddy, he's just waiting here. Selling as much as you could possibly dream. Let's get another large batch of these. 275 seems like a nice amount. He, the Ring of Giants does go up in price every time he moves, but it's not a big price difference. And uh, honestly, you get a Ring of Giants plus one down in the gutter that I already have, so it's not an important drop by any means. I mean, it's not an important item to grab, by any means. That takes care of everything out in the world. Time to get three level ups, I believe, and upgrade all my Estus flasks. Now that I've got myself back to Majula, finally. I know I've been saying I'll do it for a while, but now is actually the time. Can I get my... No, I can't get any more adaptability frames. So... More... Stamina, more vigor. That's what's going to do me right. Upgrade my Estus Flask. I think I've got like four shards. I really just have a ridiculous amount. I might even have five. Two. The animations take forever. And it's still annoying that you have to feed NPCs one at a time. I was really hoping they were going to learn from Dark Souls 1 that feeding NPCs items one at a time is a terrible idea, but it would seem not. Oh well, that's my SS flasks all the way up to plus 10, and I have three boosts on them. And so that's going to be all for the episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really glad I could get this great axe here. I'm going to start using a few more projectiles for a little bit of range damage, but my great weapons are really, really making me happy. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.